It's being called the worst security crisis between Russia and the West since the Cold War. The threat of Russian military action in Ukraine lingering, Russian President Vladimir Putin now increasing military exercises in the region, even in the face of severe economic sanctions. More sanctions on Russia could be fairly fatal. It's a very small economy, even though it's a powerful military force. And they cannot really compete economically with well, with the United States or the European Union. All of this stemming from Kremlin concerns over NATO expansion, Putin putting a show of force behind demands that the alliance not expand into Ukraine or other former Soviet countries. University of Alberta professor of Russian and Eastern European history David Marple saying the Russian-German alliance could be a way out of the crisis, with too much for Putin to risk over the nearly completed Nord Stream pipeline. Which would actually um, separate the Russian German economies from that of the rest of the European Union, which is what Putin has wanted for a long time. At protests in Kiev Saturday, Ukrainians saying they are standing together in defiance. Despite all the propaganda, despite all the Russian misleading information, despite all President Vladimir Putin's pressure, Ukraine is united. Putin himself saying that joint military drills with NATO and Ukraine makes the situation urgent for Russia. Experts offering that it could just be a test of the American president. Joe Biden has been in power now for just over a year and he's never really been tested. It's not clear whether Biden will take a firm hand. The president reiterating Friday that he will. Let there be no doubt at all that if Putin makes this choice, Russia will pay a heavy price. Ruta Bay, there's a long history in the two-party system of American politics of uh, sort of criticizing the party that is in office, in this case the Democrats, uh, Republicans doing that now, Mitch McConnell saying that NATO forces should be put onto the eastern flank there, uh, getting ahead of the president in as much as they can do that, but at least pro providing opposition here at home while the president deals with what's going on with NATO abroad. Ruta Bay. Michael, thank you. And in another development today, the Baltic nations of Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania plan to send U.S.-made missiles to Ukraine, a move that the United States fully endorsed today. Here now for a deeper look into the tensions between Ukraine and Russia is the chair of U.N. Affairs at the Ukrainian World Congress, Andrei Dobryansky. Uh, Mr. Dobryansky, welcome to Prime. Thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you for inviting me and thank you for talking about this important topic. So what can you tell us about how the people in Ukraine are feeling right now? Have you heard from them and have you heard reports that the American embassy has been evacuated? Uh, we've been hearing reports about a potential evacuation. We've heard uh, today in Kiev uh, that it would not only be the American embassy, but several other of the major G7 countries uh, who've been put on alert, those embassies. However, if you looked at this morning's poll on the national uh, public broadcaster, you would see 60%. Uh, they don't believe anything's going to happen anytime soon. This is just a general poll to the people, as opposed to 30% who uh, uh, think that war is going to happen. I think it also depends depends on what part of the country you're in. Uh, if you're on a border area, whether that's by the Russian occupied territory or maybe even all the way on the west where Russian has forces uh, in uh, occupied Moldovan territory, those people are probably getting ready uh, in a more uh, frenetic pace. But that is interesting. That's a pretty staggering number. 60% in Ukraine don't think that an invasion is imminent. Um, well, I, th I think also they've been living under a constant threat of war uh, for eight years. And and uh, for, for understanding what war means to them, uh, they have people who are shot on a regular basis. So the the peace, the ceasefire is violated by Russia almost every day. And there's a great report in the New York Times about the fact that Ukrainian soldiers just have to grin and bear it uh, because they are trying not to shoot back. They've been ordered not to shoot back. But uh, almost on a regular basis, you have Ukrainian casualties coming from the Russian side. And that is the state of as best it can get. So when those people say uh, Russia is not going to have a big invasion, they're just expecting this uh, this long slog that we have right now. So I guess it's a, a semantics uh, issue. Yeah. Um, yeah. Today, I want to talk to you about this development, the accusation from the British government that Russia wants to replace Ukraine's government with a pro-Moscow administration. Not a surprise to a lot of people, but what can you tell us about that? And also, what is Putin's endgame here? 
Well, Putin has uh, demonstrated his endgame for many, many years, whether it's his speech in 2007, uh, uh, later in 2012. Uh, just this past year, he issued an essay where he uh, completely denounced the whole entire concept of Ukrainians uh, as a separate people, as a people deserving of their own country. Uh, so we know what Putin uh, has his designs on, and that's for the fact that he will never recognize Ukraine as worthy of being an independent country. And we know that he has the right to be president, given the fact that he's changed the constitution in Russia so many times until 2036. So for Ukrainians and Ukraine, this is a long slog. This is going to uh, continue on for many, many years, which is why the West, uh, it's so great to see the West consolidating and standing firmly at the NATO meeting when all 30 countries said, you know what? Instead of asking us for a request, we're going to ask you to remove your soldiers from Ukraine, your soldiers from Moldova, your soldiers from, from Georgia. So it's a long-term problem. And that's why it's great to see what the Senate is doing, what the House is doing, not just in terms of uh, voting for continued aid to Ukraine, but now looking at a possible Lend-Lease program like the United States did for England during World War II. And, you know, messaging matters when it comes to diplomacy, of course. I want to play what President Biden had to say when asked about the price Russia would pay for invading Ukraine. And so I think what you're going to see is that Russia will be held accountable if it invades. And it depends on what it does. It's one thing if it's a minor incursion and then we end up having a fight about what to do and not do, et cetera. He also announced uh, the U.S. will not be sending troops to Ukraine, and he also suggested that NATO members might actually be divided on the way they should respond to a potential incursion. All of those comments, of course, receiving a lot of backlash. What do you make of them? Well, uh, uh, any organization that represents Ukrainian interests automatically uh, uh, make sure to slap down whatever statement comes out uh, from the, any Western leader, especially here in the United States. The Ukrainian Congress Committee put out a statement right away that evening, uh, cautioning, again, the kind of statements that have come out by presidents in the past, whether that's been President Obama or President Trump or now President Biden. Words matter. President Biden himself said that words matter. However, at the same time, we are very grateful for the fact that 90 tons of, U uh, of U.S. material landed in Ukraine today. The more we help Ukraine, the better it is. So for the Biden administration, I think it would be great uh, a, a show of representation for the fact that neither the vice president or the president has spoken directly to the people in the United States, the voters in the United States that really care about these issues. I know for a fact that this week, the White House is having stakeholder meetings with different ethnic minorities, whether that's uh, Hispanic minorities, um, uh, uh, African-American leaderships, all for good reason. And that's coming from the very top. But when you're talking about a country uh, that's being in currently invaded, it will be great to hear directly from the president, not in these uh, you know mistaken statements that he's making, but directly to the communities. And that goes for the United Polish communities here in the United States. I know there's over uh, nearly 10 million Americans of Polish descent, the Baltic communities, and even our Crimean Tatar friends. All of these communities want to hear from the president or vice president directly. Tell us what you're doing to help Ukraine, because we want to be reassured when it comes time to show up at the polls. However, he has uh, the, the administration has made significant efforts, sending significant aid. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken meeting with his Russian counterparts in Geneva yesterday. Uh, the president is at Camp David this weekend, huddled with his advisors, trying to come up with a way to prevent a war. And so much else to worry about, of course, on the national security front and the radar. I want to end with this question. Why should Americans care about what's happening on the border of Ukraine right now? Uh, for the exact reason that we went to Nuremberg at the end of World War II, other countries had their own things to prosecute uh, at that trial. But what the United States did, the United States prosecuted for the breaking of the peace. And that is what happened in Ukraine by Russia. That is what happened in Georgia. And that is what happened in seven, under, seven active conflict zones by Russia. Russia has broken the peace. And there needs to be a way of enforcing the peace back to get, to get uh, peace back onto the European continent. Whether that's making sure that we support Ukraine altogether or making sure that Russia decides not to renuclearize territories of Ukraine, which the entire world agreed would never have nuclear weapons again. And we fear that that's happening right now in the Crimean Peninsula. Mr. Dobryansky, we appreciate your time tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.